Hi everyone, Luke here from Pigmento Films. Sorry I've been gone for so long, just been really, really busy with work. Last time we were looking at the Lumix S1 firmware 2.0 updates, uh, I looked at the 6K open, uh, 6K open gate mode. The mode I was most excited about though was the cinematic 4K. So this is what this video is all about. Now I'm really lucky this time around because I'm actually joined by the Jump Rope sisters from Jump Rope UK and they're helping me out because in this video we're going to look at the Cine 4K 422 10-bit and 25p, which is what's filming now. And then I want to see how that mixes with Cine 4K 420 10-bit, everything in HLG, and that's going to be at 60. Uh, now, in the 60 mode, there is a bit of a crop. This mode, there isn't. So in, 25, in 24p, 25p, and 30, there's no crop. For me, this isn't a big issue. However, I could see how for some people it might be. But personally, the video that you're going to watch in a bit has all been shot on a gimbal and I like to stay wide so the crop is kind of compensated. Um, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment and I'll get back to you after this. Okay, so I'm really excited about that video. It's an amazing collaboration. You can find their details below. They're the Jump Rope Sisters. They're on Instagram. You can find them at Jump Rope UK as well. Uh, they, they're all over the place and they're absolutely incredible. Now, what I've found uh, using these modes is I think they're pretty much interchangeable. So as you would use any other mode, to be honest, it's not like a massive deal. Sticking my Panasonic 24 to 105 lens at my, at the widest it will go, which is 24. With the crop, it gave me, I'd say, probably about 50, probably less than 50, but it was just perfect for what I was doing. It meant the lens weren't gonna slide out while I was running around with a gimbal. And uh, you might have noticed that the autofocus really, really sticky, it really caught up well with the, uh, with the subject. Now, this is because I was filming in 90, um, so partially because of the crop factor, which means there's less, less reading has to be done across the whole of the sensor and also partly because I was filming with a shutter angle of 90 degrees instead of 180. Now for sports and that, I would usually choose a, uh, a different shutter angle anyway because you've got a lot of action to, to shoot and the motion blur that you would associate with cinematic, uh, a cinematic sort of 180 degree shutter roll uh, isn't as important. And I must say, in general, you can get very bogged down by sticking to very rigid rules. Your camera has got hundreds of modes in there. You should explore using them rather than sticking rigidly to one type of mode. However, it's all completely up to you, obviously. Now, I was really impressed. Where would I be using this? Well, for me, obviously, Cine 4K is 4096 by 2160, which isn't like a massive difference between 3840 by 2160, so it's not like a giant leap, but the difference is there and I do find that useful. Also the Cine 4K is called that because it's the native re resolution of cinematic projectors projecting in 4K, which is great. If you've got any like plans like I do, hopefully when I'm not like, working on everything else, I'd really like to have a go at some more sort of passion projects that I've got planned. Again, also it's just more options for your camera. I don't think this is gonna make this camera the best bang for book cinema camera on the market, but I still think it makes it the best bang for book camera you can get on the market. Obviously autofocus with stand-in, I've, I've said I'm not gonna keep talking about autofocus. Instead, what I hope to do is um, a video about how you can get the most out of this autofocus. Now, my Lumix S5 is an amazing camera as well, 
but it feels like a B camera to this. It's a great lightweight monster with the same sensor, which makes it a, a great accompaniment to this camera. But this, the robustness and now the feature pack, uh, the, it's, it's so feature packed that I think this S1 is like a, almost a perfect camera for me. Um, saying that the S5, that, that's staying on the gimbal because my back was in pieces after that. And that, I mean, I mean, come on guys as well, just to let you know, the S1's a heavy camera, but it's not that heavy. I mean, I don't want to emasculate anyone. And my back was in pieces because I was filming for hours and hours. If I was using any type of camera for that long on a gimbal, uh, you, with the weights displaced in front of you, probably gonna give you a bad back, but it is heavier than some of the other sort of cameras you could get out there. Sony a7C, Lumix S5, etc. I'm really impressed. Now, I don't know where I'm gonna go next. I'm, I feel like I've covered all the modes that were really, really important to me. What I might do is just do something breaking down the autofocus, like I said, to get the best out of the autofocus in this camera. I love these Cine 4K modes. The slightly sort of more options I'm gonna have for uh, cropping are gray. Mixing the Cine 4K, sorry, 24, 30 or uh, 25p modes with the, Cine, with the Cine 4K 50 and 60 modes is an absolute dream. And it's not just because they're Cine 4K, it's the fact that they're 10-bit. I cannot tell you how much I hate filming in 8-bit now because when it comes to fixing a problem in post, you're probably gonna run into like really, really like bad banding or just very limited scope. Uh, to really take advantage of that dynamic range, um, I think you need to be shooting in 10-bit. I'm really happy with these Cine 4K modes. If you have any questions, leave them in a the comment below. Don't know if I've mentioned, I filmed everything in HLG, everything's in 4K. Leave some comments down below. I try my best to get back to everyone. And uh, for any links and that, see the description. And for any mistakes I might have made, just let me know and I'll leave some annotations and stuff. It's been amazing and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Take it easy, guys. Bye.